This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to show you through your new Salem 171 RBXL. Okay, so I'm on the door side of the trailer here. I'll start at the back. Okay, so you have uh, your hot water heater. This particular model works on gas. As you can see, it's it, the plug is out right now and it's empty. This is your plug. And this, the thing attached to the back of it is an anode rod. It's a sacrificial rod that uh, if you if you got man, minerals in the water, for example, that will normally attack the lining of your water heater. It'll attack this rod instead so your water heater doesn't get damaged. So this will get eaten away over time. You know, so maybe three years or so you, you need to replace it. Depends on what type of water you're using, from, if you're using well water and from where where it's coming from, what the, what the water is like. Um, the switch to operate this is on the inside of the trailer. The only thing I need to tell you is, is before you take this plug out, always pull up on this and um, vent the uh, pressure out of it so it doesn't, uh, so the uh, anode rod and plug doesn't come shooting out of there like a cannonball followed by a gallon of water. So you always want to let the pressure out before you take the plug out, okay? You got four stabilizer jacks, one in each corner. There's just a three quarter inch socket fits on there or a crank. Uh, you don't lift the trailer with these. You're just going to, excuse me, you're just going to uh, steady the trailer. Now this particular model comes with these yellow device here which is called a strong arm. It's normally an add-on, but this comes standard with it. The thing you have to remember, this T-handle right here loosens the, uh, the uh, strong arm. This, this front piece slides inside of this larger piece in the back. So uh, the only time you'll tighten this is when, you, when you've extended the jacks and you've got it set up how you want it. Then you'll tighten this so it takes the forward and rear wiggle out of it. Um, Otherwise, you're going to keep it loose when you're bringing this jack up and down, right? So it can slide freely. So you're just going to tighten them up when you get it down and you're ready to take the shake out of the trailer, okay? Otherwise, keep that loose. And that applies to all four corners. Uh, you have some storage here. And you can access your water tank from here. A hot water tank, okay? Um, I just want to show you this. Now, I don't know what you know about trailers, so I'll assume you don't know. You have to, you can't get antifreeze into the water heater when you're winterizing it, right? So they give you these bypass valves here, and you can see like at the bottom of this blue line there, that's called the bypass line, the one that's vertical right now. Um, when these valves are, the handle is parallel with a, with a line, that means that's what the line that's open. So you see right now, uh, it's in bypass mode still. So. Um, we're still prepping this and it's, it'll be in camping mode when you pick it up um, But right now it's still in bypass. So what would happen if you tried to pump antifreeze into it? It, it would come up to this valve at the bottom uh, And it can't get past there to go into the water heater So it loops through this line up and back this way Therefore it bypasses the water heater Therefore you don't you don't get any antifreeze into the water heater and that's that's the, the rule because it'll leave a foul taste and a, and a bad smell. So you never, anytime you're putting antifreeze into this water heater, or um, excuse me, into the trailer, or anytime there's antifreeze in the system, you're always gonna be in bypass mode like it is now. To put it in camping mode, you're gonna flush all the water out. Just hook up your water and flush it out. And then you'll switch these valves so the water heater will fill up and drain properly, okay? Something you're going to have to educate yourself a bit on, but I just wanted to let you know because that's very important, okay? All right. You've got a power awning with a LED strip. You've got power on the outside to plug in coffee pot or whatever. Outside speakers. Pass-through storage. This is just a... a port for a solar battery charger if you wanted to add one. This was made by Furion. It would have that type of plug on the solar panel. So that's an option you can buy if you choose to. Um, you got two 20-pound uh, LP tanks. This is the LP regulator right here. This is an automatic changeover regulator, so it's going to draw the door side tank 
down till it's empty, then it'll switch over to this one on the off-door side. When you hear the off-door side tank being used, you can tell which one's being used, you can hear it. Then you'll go out and get this one filled, okay? Also, the deep cycle marine battery here, and that's the kill switch for your battery right there. Right now it's on, you just turn the key to shut it off. The reason you would want to shut it off is because the carbon monoxide and LP gas detector is hardwired to the battery. So it will, um, even if you shut everything off in the trailer, you're still going to, still going to uh, draw power from it because of the, the uh, safety devices in the trailer. So uh, the bottom line is you want to, when you put it into storage, you can shut this off. Otherwise, you're going to leave it on. You, you only shut it off when you put it into storage. Okay. You have a power tongue jack up and down with a hitch light on it. Okay, the other side of your pass-through storage. This is an adapter. It's a 30 amp system and you get a 30 amp plug with it. Um, this will reduce your 30 amp plug down to a 15 amp uh, home service. Just keep in mind that you can run everything in this trailer plugged in at home except for the air conditioner. The air conditioner draws more than 20 amps. It draws like 28 amps when the compressor cycles on so it will eventually pop a circuit breaker in your house unless you have it wired for 30 amps right which is rare so um, keep in mind you uh, you uh, if you're plugging in at home you're you do not want to run the air conditioner okay um, I'll be hunt under there is the fresh water drain which is just a way to uh, to drain your fresh water tank that's your vent for your furnace this is the vent for your range hood that's over your stove let me see if I can get a picture of it here now you can push this, uh, hopefully you can see this, I know, let me change over to here. I don't know if you can, if it's focusing or, or, or correcting for the light or not, but anyway, there's a baffle in here that flaps, so if you're using the range hood, you want it to flap freely like that, so it vents. Otherwise, you're going to just push it shut like that, so uh, it doesn't get damaged when you're driving or, or uh, that sort of thing. So the only time you're going to have it open is when you're using the range hood. Okay. So, there's two ways to use your water here, or to get water. Let me get past here. Okay, so the normal way, which you're almost always going to use, is the city water hookup. So you're just going to put your hose on here, turn it on, and you're ready to go. Now, if you go to like an older state park that has plumbing on the, it does not have plumbing on the campsite, but it has plumbing at a fill station when you first go into the campground, you can actually fill the tank. This is, fills your fresh water tank. And uh, you have a pump inside that you could turn on that'll pressurize your trailer. So you, ba basically, you can use this trailer if you're if you're camping, uh, you know, away from a place that has city water, like way out in the middle of nowhere or at some of the older state parks. Um, you can always uh, still use the shower and the toilet and everything just by using your onboard water and the pump. Okay. I guess I went a long way to say something simple, but. Um, that's it. You'll almost always use the city water connection because most places have city water. Okay, I mentioned now that I'm down this low, that gate valve right there, you just pull it out, uh, the handle out, and that dumps your fresh water tank right there, okay? You have more gate valves here for the, for the uh, gray tank and the black tank. This trailer has two tanks. It has a, a gray tank, excuse my camera work here, which, is, which the valve to dump your gray tank is right here. And then as a black tank, the valve is right here. The black tank holds um, toilet water and waste, and the gray tank holds uh, sink and shower water. Okay? Um, you're going to take the cap off. You put your hose right on here. It goes into the dump station. Then you're going to dump the gray, or excuse me, the black tank first. I'm talking uh, before I'm thinking here. So you definitely want to do that and that will dump the black. Then you'll pull this one out second and you'll dump the gray. The reason you dump the gray second is because uh, it's cleaner water than the black water so it's going to help clean out your hose, okay? Now this particular trailer also has another feature back here called a black tank flush. See it's next to the tail light here and you can put the hose at the dump station, screw it right on there Turn it on, and it's, the black tank has a, um, jets inside, like a sprinkler, sort of, and it'll spray out the inside of the tank, get it cleaner, plus it cleans off the sensors in your tank that tell you how full it is, so it's a good thing to do. Um, just make sure, like it says on the sticker, that you always have the black valve open, 
this gate valve that I showed you over here, you always have this open before you turn the water on, okay? Otherwise too much pressure can build up in there. This is your cord. It just pulls out, right? It's 25 feet long. Like I said, I have the adapter to adapt it down because it's a 30 amp cord. Um, cable and satellite through. It just coax fittings. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is pre-wired for a backup camera. If you get a backup camera for it, you want to get this brand. It's a Furion, and it should fit inside that housing. Uh, we sell them here. Uh, you'll talk to uh, somebody in parts up there, and they can tell you more about it. But basically, when you turn on your running lights, it lights up the camera so you can back up and see behind you, and you can also turn it on when you're traveling down the road if you choose to. Um, while we're looking up, you have to inspect your roof. This is very, very important. Um, not just this trailer, every trailer, every trailer ever made. So you got to go up on the roof. You can walk up there. Uh, you check all the seals. It has a lap sealant down there called Dicor. So you check all the seals and make sure they're good and tight, that nothing's cracking or lifting. Um, odds are you won't have to reseal anything, but that's why you inspect it to make sure. So you're going to inspect it in the spring um, when you uh, are dewinterizing it. Go up there and look around. In the middle of the summer, go up there and look around, and then when in the fall, when you're winterizing, go up there and look around. Just always check those seals and inspect them. Someday, some year, you're going to have to do some resealing on it. When that time comes, either have somebody do it or, or learn about it and do it yourself. But you got to inspect the seals. That's very important. Okay. Let's go inside here. Your steps just flip inside the trailer. I'll show you that right now. Uh, I know I'm, I'm really close to this everything, but it's the best I can do with this cell phone. So you, you put it up like that and just shut the door. To bring it down, you, you go like this and let it down. Okay, now you have adjustments here. You can see these pins that go through these holes here. These legs need to be a little bit, set down a little bit longer where we're parked because there's sort, sort of a dip here. Um, so you can adjust them as needed, okay? All right, so here we are inside. First thing we see is a control panel with lights. So you got a light here, and then the awning light, which is this LED strip right there. Um, to, to put your awning in and out, it's this switch right here, so the top sends it out. I won't be able to get it out all the way because... Hold on one second here. Okay, because uh, we don't have enough room there, make sure your door is straight out. Let me back up so you can see that. Straight out like that. 90 degrees to the side of the trailer. And you just roll it out. As you roll it out, um, if we had enough room, we would go to the point where we can see the awning tube. It'll be a metal aluminum tube. Uh, and that's when you know to take your finger off the button and stop. You can also pitch it. If you see down there, there's a knob on that lower arm. Once it's all around, that'll be straight. You can also pull it, pull the awning down, for example, on, on this side here, so to pitch runoff that way. And you can tighten that knob and it'll stay in position. Um, you can learn that from your manual. It'll tell you more about it. Bring it in, you just roll it in, and it'll stop automatically. Everything I'm telling you is either in the main manual for the trailer or in the supplemental manuals for all the appliances, okay? Uh, you can always refer back to them. I told you that you can uh, start the water heater inside. You just do that. Always make sure there's water in the water heater before you turn it on. Um, your water pump, if you have, you're going to carry on board or use your onboard fresh water, you just light, turn it on right there and you've got pressurized water. The lights I showed you, that's the awning. And these are how you, how you check the levels for your tanks. So this first one's a battery. See how everything lights up full. But we're plugged in right now. You always check it when you're not plugged in, okay? The fresh water is next, if you can see it. It's empty. If it, as you fill it, it graduates up in one-third increments, and each one of those LEDs will light up till it's full. The black tank is empty. Once, you, once the two-third light lights up, you gotta start thinking about dumping it. And then the gray tank there is empty, and it'll, like I said, goes up in one-third increments as it fills. Okay, this is your radio okay so this radio basically is an AM FM radio but you can 
uh, stream this way, uh, or str excuse me, stream off this USB right here, so you could put, you know, you know, 20 albums on a little stick and take them with you, whatever you want to do. This is an HDMI here, HDMI in, if you want to go into it with a, a game machine or something. Uh, uh, it also has Bluetooth, so you can hook up wirelessly from your phone or tablet. Um, and it has two zones for the speakers, zone one and zone two. Um, uh, zone two is outside, zone one is inside. Uh, it has a remote also, so you can do that. Now, your, your TV is right here. Your backer for the TV is right here. You can patch this back of this radio through to a TV set. Um, that's why you have the HDMI in. If you wanted to use like a, a Blu-ray player or uh, one of those game machines that play Blu-rays or play games on for a rainy day, you can go straight into the system through that HDMI, and if it's and if it's patched through to the TV, it'll it'll work like a you know like a regular system with with audio and video. Okay. Okay. I hope I'm making sense to you here. I'm, I've done several of these today, so I'm getting kind of slap happy here. Um, this is your thermostat. You punch it once to light it up. Then you go through. This is fan. Fan is just the uh, air conditioner running without the compressor. Cool is the air conditioner. You see you went from high to low to auto. You're always going to run them, everything on auto. If it gives you an option, you always choose auto. Then you push it longer, you get heat. You can shut the temperature here. Okay. Everything has a lag time before it turns on. I'll shut it off here. So it's off. But keep in mind, everything has a lag time when you turn them on or off. So the air conditioner will hesitate. It'll take 5 seconds, 10 seconds before it turns on or off. Um, the furnace, for example, when you, when you turn it off, the, the flame goes out immediately. But, there's your furnace down there, by the way. But it'll purge itself, so it'll keep running for a minute or two. So um, be patient. It takes, there's a little bit of a lag time with everything. Now this table, you can remove these, the posts that hold it up here. You can pull those right out and put them and stow them underneath the bench here. And you can drop the table down here and sit it here and here and then put the back cushions in the middle to fill the space and that turns into a bed. Okay. You have uh, an escape window here. I'll back up here so you can see it. You push this through and that that's, you can use that for ventilation like that. But if you push it all the way through, and then you grab a hold of this tab and pull it, the screen will pop out. It's just held in by clips, and you can escape out the back that way if you need to. Okay. Of course, you have USB ports and and uh, 110 uh, electricity ports everywhere. Um, you have a Murphy bed, which is a great thing because basically you reclaim the floor space during the day, so it's much like a larger trailer. Normally you're going to lose a third or a quarter of the space to the bed. This way you got it, reclaim it during the day. And not only that, you have a great couch to sit on, um, which makes a big difference when you're in it for a weekend of rain, for example. It's much more comfortable than sitting at the dinette here. So, all right. So to, to operate this, you're going to just pull the arm cushions off. Okay. Then you're going to jackknife it flat. You do that by grabbing it down here. And just going like so. If you notice, I'll pull it up again. There is storage under there too. It's the pass-through storage. All right. So then you're going to pull this out. I'll latch it here also, and bring it on down. It, it's not heavy at all. And there you have it. Still made and everything. Now this does have a latch here, right? Right there. So to before you bring it up here, I, I can. Trying to do this so you can see. You grab a hold of it and pull it out to unlatch it. Then you're going to push it back up. Go like so. Go like so. Whoops, went too far there. Go like so. And then you'll put the couch back up just by grabbing it at the bottom and then sort of pulling it from the top while you push it a little bit. And it goes right back into a couch. So that's excellent. Um, your microwave works like any other microwave. 
this is the vent hood I told you about. Remember the the uh, vent or the range hood. The vent is on the outside. So there's fan and light. Remember to open the baffle on the vent if you're going to use this feature. Your there's no gas turned on here, so um, basically all you're going to do to light this is you're going to I'll do this burner here. You're going to turn it on. Then you're going to grab, this is the sparker here, you just turn it clockwise to spark it. And it'll light the burners for you. Now the oven is a little bit different. This oven, you can see back here, you'll have to take my word for it, there's a pilot light back there. So you need a grill lighter with a long neck on it. You'll come over here, you'll put this to pilot, and then you depress it like that. While you're holding it in, you'll light the pilot light. When the pilot light lights, you'll hold it for another 10 seconds or so to heat up. Then you go to operating temperature, and you, it'll once you're at the operating temperature, it'll, it'll cycle through just like a normal oven does. But when you go back to off, the flame goes out, obviously, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot each time. Okay? All right. Just so you know, it says antifreeze inlet here. This is a panel is held on is right below the range here. It's held on by uh, number two square headed screws. So you unscrew those and you'll see there's a water pump behind there plus a, a line that you use to winterize the trailer. It's something you'll have to educate yourself about. You can do, if you don't already know, I'm assuming you don't, you may know trailers. So. But if you don't, you either have friends who have trailers to help you or um, you can look at YouTube videos. There's a lot of different ways to learn it. Remember what I told you about bypassing the water heater, though. You never want to get antifreeze into the water heater. But that's where you would draw the antifreeze in anyway. Okay, this is the power converter. This is actually tape that comes off. So this converts uh, 110 AC down to 12 volt DC. So you can see right here, you have regular household circuit breakers. This side of it is 110. 10 AC so you get you know like the some things have to run on AC power like the air conditioner or the microwave for example but everything else is converted down to 12 volt DC over here and you can see all these are labeled um, and you have regular automotive type fuses here um, everything that can run on 12 volts DC in a trailer does so this everything they can run on DC power they do and this is where it happens um, also this plastic is transparent or trans translucent anyway and um, if any of these fuses blow they'll light up and you can actually see them glowing through the plastic here also this power converter is a battery tender so it'll sense how much energy you, your battery has up front and if it's totally charged it'll just trickle a couple amps or whatever it needs if it's really low it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs but it'll always keep it charged as long as you're plugged in so um, you, uh, that's one of the reasons you always keep the battery on, the kill switch on, except when you're in storage. When you're pulling it down the road, your tow vehicle will charge the battery. When you're plugged in at the campsite, this power converter will charge the battery. So you always want it on unless it's in storage, okay? All right. This refrigerator is a 12-volt compressor refrigerator. It works just like a refrigerator at home. It runs off a of 12 volts DC, so when you're pulling it down the road, your, your tow vehicle will keep the battery charged and it'll run off the battery. When you're plugged into the campground, the power converter converts AC to DC power, remember, and it'll keep your, your refrigerator running. So um, you'll always have cold food and drinks. All right, so in the bathroom, this GFCI, all the plugs in the trailer are wired through this one, even the one on the outside. So if you're using a coffee pot outside and it, uh, you know, it, the breaker pops, or the, I'm sorry, the GFCI pops, you always reset it in here because they're all wired through this one, all the plugs. The um, shower works like any other shower. Let me just get this off of here. As you can see, it's hot and cold water. The uh, sink works like any other sink, of course. The toilet, the thing to remember about it is um, you, you basically you always need water and chemical in it when you're using it. So 
when you first, the way you flush it to start off with, so you can see there's a pedal down here. See my foot? I push down the pedal, it opens the trap, and that's the black tank directly below. So water will come spinning out because we're hooking up the water, and whoosh, it'll all, everything will go down into the black tank. When you first get to the campground, you have to put a little bit of water in it and some chemical. The bottom line is you can't use the toilet without the chemical in it and without water in it. Um, the chemical, you're gonna, it comes liquid, it comes powdered, it comes pre-measured packets or uh, with a scoop. Depends on what product you get. You just have to read the directions to know how much to use, right? So when you get to the campground, you're going to hook up your water. You're going to plug it in. Then you'll come inside, and you'll dump the chemical in here. And then you'll step on this and just let it fill till there's a gallon or two, you know, or somewhere in there uh, worth of water. Because you, there's no way to tell exactly what a gallon is. There's no, uh, you know, um, no monitor panel that'll tell you a gallon, so you just sort of have to get used to using it. The bottom line is you got to have some water in it to start off with and chemical. Then you're all set to use it. Um, when you when you flush it, it'll only fill about up to here, right? So it, over here at the pedal, if you, you can see, I don't know, let me put it so you can probably see both the trap. I can move it, but the trap doesn't open. That allows water to to fill the bowl. So I can push it down and let the water fill the bowl, let's say up to here, or however much water you want to use in it. Um, and then you can use the toilet, but you have to fill it up to your level before you use it, okay? Um, now, like I said, you can never use this toilet dry. So let's say you're staying at the campground and you have to dump the, the black tank, right? So you dump the black tank and you're still going to camp there. You'll have to come back inside and repeat that procedure. Put some chemical in, step on the pedal and put a, a gallon or two of water in there. So. Um, you never use it dry, okay? All right. I think we've pretty much covered everything. Um, you can only say so much or do so much on a cell phone video here, but with the virus, this is the way we have to do it. Um, so if you have other questions, you can, you can call and we'll talk you through it. Like I said, every appliance, you can go on their website and uh, they've got videos, plus there are manuals for every appliance in the trailer that come with it, so you can learn that way. And um, of course there's YouTube and there's uh, um, Salem has videos also. So, okay, well, thank you for purchasing from National RV Detroit and uh, goodbye.